welcome back everybody. Um, it's a beautiful day today. The sun Ooh. is absolutely <laughs> out. How are you Libby today? I'm okay, thank you. Are we are we ready for another week of cooking? Um, yes. yes. I mean, I can't eat the majority of stuff, but yeah, it's nice to watch you cook. Um, well, we're heading, um, we've got two more and then we're heading into Easter. Uh, but I just wanted today to give you a real classic of a recipe and sort of several alternatives within one recipe. So we're going to make a chicken milanaise, which is essentially a crispy pan fried chicken scallop served on a bed of lovely pasta with a tomato sauce and some parmesan shavings. So real feel good comfort food. Now for the chicken, you're going to need uh, two chicken breasts. Um, or turkey steaks. How much is this? How many people is this for? This is going to feed four. Okay, so two big turkey steaks, um, chicken or steak. chicken breasts, or um, a a pork tenderloin. I'm going to need an egg, maybe two, um, a couple of tablespoons of plain flour. Now you're also going to need 150 grams of either whizzed up stale bread as breadcrumbs, panko breadcrumbs. Um, classic alternative is a packet of stuffing mix dried stuffing mix like sage and onion, or I don't know why I've got these in my cupboard. There's 150 grams here of Moroccan inspired um, Sainsbury's Taste the Different breadcrumbs. No where, idea where they've come from. Can be brought from instead. all major wholesalers. All major supermarkets. <laughs> now for the tomato sauce, um, super easy. An onion, clove of garlic, tin of plum tomatoes, chopped tomatoes. Um, I've just got half a carton of passata I've had left in the fridge. You could use a whole carton. About a tablespoon, good squirt tomato puree, some dried herbs, salt, pepper, a um, little bit of sugar actually, which I'll put in, and then some dried pasta. I've got spaghetti. Um, we, Libby and I were just saying the rule of thumb is about, about 50 grams per person of pasta. It never seems enough to me. Um, I've got 250 here, which is about right for about four people. Uh, and we're going to have this for supper tonight with a nice big salad. Um, so what we're going to do first of all is just get the um, tomato sauce on. Now, a good tomato sauce is a, is a classic life skill, wouldn't you agree, Libby? Yep, it is my speciality. Once again, sorry for the cup of slurp. Cup no, no, of today I've got a coffee. <laughs> oh, oh, I know, I'm really pushing it out. Bringing the changes, Libby. Oh my goodness. I tell you what, we could really push the boat out and get the coffee machine on one day. I'm not a fan. Are you not? I don't think it's a very good coffee machine, no offence. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with my coffee machine. Yeah, but I just go. would rather have instant. I think it's just a load of faff and I just prefer... <laughs> yeah, it's got to be a good instant. This Cafe Zero, yeah. Okay, other brands are suitably available. No, this is the best one. Anyway, I have um, peeled my garlic. Um, I'm going to crush my garlic. Libby's going to moan we don't have a garlic crusher. I'm going to tell her they're not worth it. They are. Cut it in half um, on its cut edge. Turn the knife around and then just... Too sharp edge. Scraping down. I meant the flat edge, sorry. Scraping down. Scrape, scrape, scrape. When you can't scrape anymore, just squash. Scrape, scrape, scrape. And squash. Now, little tip here is just pop on a little bit of salt onto your garlic. Why? Because two reasons actually. Number one, the abrasiveness, can you hear that crunchiness of the salt, will help grind that garlic down into a paste. And secondly, um, the salt helps to bring out the flavour in the garlic. Okay? Interesting stuff. So, really nicely, um, let's get a bit of Nicely ground up a bit of garlic there. Um, can't be fresh garlic, really don't like any form of sort of dried or pre canned or jarred garlic. Onion, could be red, could be shallot, could be um, <laughs> spring onions. Okay, again, top off the onion, so that's the stalk. Bridge hold through the root. Peel the skin off and then we're gonna finely chop this onion. So this is going to be a regular just tomato sauce, but if you didn't want to faff with the chicken to go with this, you can stack out this with lots of different things. So um, when I'm frying the onions, you can fry peppers, mushrooms, courgettes, lots of different veggies to go in it. Um, or you can add some minced beef and turn it into a bolognese. Um, right, bridge hold, then some chops, you have a look, up to but not through the root, like that. Then 
little claw grip, get your fingers out of the way, a horizontal chop, and then that will allow you to cut it into very fine dice. You would be surprised at the cookery school how many adults say they'd wish someone would show them how to chop an onion that way. Put onion there. Oh, I'm going to follow it. Oh, and then we're going to put over to my favourite pan in the entire world. Have this pan. It's almost older than you, actually, Libby. Interesting. And it doesn't look like it's over 20 it was, years of it age. It was a lot of money, but it was one of my best To be fair, at university, I have a pan a little bit like that one, but it's got a handle. And this I remember... It's got two handles. No, I know, but it's got like a long handle. And it was about £60, but you brought it for me and you were like, you will use this. And honestly, I just use it for everything. There you go. And it's, the, I think, a good pan. A good pan. I always teach our sitcom students in our PSHE lessons a pan like this. You don't, because you don't need anything else. Stir fry. Can go in the oven casserole. Yeah. You can do sauces. It's worth the money rather than bake. a few little ones. Anyway, it's just a little life tip from me. Oh. I, should, I should come to university skills lessons, Mum. Thank you. Well, you, you could probably run them, actually. <laughs> I've been training you since you're at five. Right, we've got a reasonable heat on there, a bit of oil. I'm just going to saute this. Oh, rogue bit. Oh, escaped. Oh, my oh, goodness. It's dripping everywhere. You'd be glad to know I've got the instructions out on how to clean the oven. Isn't it dirty, is it? Well, it's pretty dirty in there. Um, right, just get that going. Then I'm going to tip in. Um, I've got some plum tomatoes here, um, which I think are better than um, chopped. Just, I know this looks a bit messy. But... <laughs> That's so grim. I would use the back of the spoon and crush oh, them. Oh, I'm not Lord, a absolute it. heathen. No, but this look, you just got chopped tomatoes. So, my theory on tomatoes. It's like that festival in Italy where everyone goes and like crushes tomatoes with their feet. Have you never seen that? No, I had a wine. It's like a big thing. Here. I'm going to wash my hands down a minute. See, so my theory on tomatoes is chopped tomatoes, they use all the sort of random, not very good tomatoes. Plum tomatoes, good big chunky tomatoes. So, you get more tomato for your money. And so, it's tomato. Ah, I just did. You just hit yourself on the cupboard again. I keep, there's this cupboard here, right? <laughs> this is where I stand to film, and I just go clonk my head against it all the blooming time. Stick of it. <laughs> oh dear. Are we into, you're almost into three weeks home now, aren't you? Or is it two weeks? Four. Well, it can't be four. Almost three. Yeah, you're right, it can't be four. I was over exaggerating. There we go. Just enjoying every minute. Right. Um, I, I would normally put a whole carton of passata, but I've just got a sort of random half of one. Use that. Waste not, want not, particularly at the moment. Let's get that all squeezed in. Um, good squirt of tomato puree. Very satisfied. Okay, just get that all squeezed in. Um, now, key ingredient, teaspoon of sugar because sugar brings out the flavour of tomatoes. Obviously, it wouldn't be one of my recipes without that. A nice bit of sea salt, a nice bit of ground black pepper, and either any sort of fresh herbs. Oh, it's a new, a new herb de Provence. Gosh, the excitement. Excitement today, Liz. <laughs> um, about a teaspoon. Okay, so um, I'm gonna put some fresh basil in at the end. Um, but you just want a little bit of background of some sort of mixed herbs or some oregano or thyme. Now, just want to um, bubble that up, bring it to a simmer and simmer it really, really gently. For about how long? For about 20 minutes or so. Now, as I said, you could have fried off a load of other vegetables to put That's in there. That's what I do if I've got like veggies in the fridge that need. So courgettes, aubergines, peppers, really mushrooms, anything in there. So the classic leftovers supper. Um, or... What you can do is you can actually cook this for about half an hour to make it thicker and use this with the bread recipe that we did last week to make some homemade pizzas, which are really great, particularly for the children to do. But I might just show you those different elements, how to assemble that in another video. So I'm just going to leave that when I come back to the chicken. So we've got some uh, really big chunky chicken uh, fillets here. I'm just going to um, just snip out that little bit where it was attached to the carcass, a little bit chewy. 
We got these from a whole chicken, didn't we? I did, yep. Following the, um, if you want to know how to join to chicken, we've got a, a jointing um, how to join to chicken online. <laughs> that didn't make any sense. No, no, it didn't, it. But it's okay. I think people understand. In a long day. Right, these are, we're going to flatten these, bash them out. So they're going to be huge. So what I'm going to do is cut them into four. So it really is a good way to make a little go a long way at the moment. I'm um, just going to wash my hands. And what we want to do is literally bash them with a rolling pin to get much thinner. So you can either do this um, between two pieces of cling film, or what I find easier is to put them into a sandwich bag, so clear bag in the middle. So pop it somewhere sort of in the middle, and then you can get out all your frustrations. Ooh. Okay, I'm out of the go. Very welcome, Rebecca. But you want to be careful that you don't completely annihilate it in one place and go right the way through. So I'm just going to get my bigger ball. Right? As I've done almost there. So oh, you've got to be a little no. bit careful. Don't worry, we can patch that up in a moment. So I'm just going to show you one more. And then... I think you went in too hard at the beginning. I did. I got a bit excited. <laughs> there we go. That's a bit better. Really nice with pork, this is as well. Mm. It's kind of... This reminds me of... This is a very... Typical thing to have up a mountain. Skiing. Don't you oh, think? Down a mountain, just in Italy. Yeah. On the side of a lake. Of a Always beach. on a menu, though, I feel like in a ski resort. Yeah. It's, it's a real good, nice comfort feel. To get everything really ready so you don't end up with a massive mess. So you want three plates. I've got some plain flour on one. Now, this is the first of my homemade chicken eggs. What do you mean? No, 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 we've had more than just this one. Have we? Look, oh, I broke the yolk. That's a bit of a disappointment. What a beauty. Yeah, we've had more, but... The first time it. using it in a video? Yes, on screen. Look how golden they are. They are the best tasting eggs I've ever had in my life. And I know that I'm biased because there are children pretty much at the minute, but... Um, then these very random breadcrumbs, which I think are really going to be very spicy. Oh, but no, mum finds, like... A little bit of pepper spicy, so. <laughs> so I, my absolute favourite is sage and onion stuffing mix for this, which I know is a bit random, but it's really, really nice. Um, so what we're going to do is just get ourselves nice and organised. I'm going to use this tray. Let's move that spaghetti there. Get rid of that. Oops, made a bit of a mess here. Right, we're Okay, so we are going to dip in flour, which protects the delicate chicken when you cook it, but also gives something for the egg to grip onto, so it doesn't just slide off. Bit messy. Children would love doing this. You will have to deep clean your kitchen at the end of the day. <laughs> and then into the breadcrumbs and just pat all of those in. And literally, you can just whizz up any leftover dry bread that you've got. You don't have to have anything really, really posh. There we go. And we're just gonna continue with the rest. What I did forget to say is that you can just cut this into little strips and just do them as goujons instead. So here are my four um, breadcrumbed scallops of chicken. Um, and if you have a look over here, my pasta sauce is put down and reduced nicely. Now, I I'm gonna take this off now, um, and because it, it's at the right consistency to stir through the cooked pasta. But as I said, if you kept cooking that for about another 10, 15 minutes, it was really thick, it's the most perfect pizza topping. 
Hello again. Uh, we decided to sort of pause the video earlier this morning and um, as you can see, by the light outside, wait and have this for supper. So I put the chicken in the fridge uh, where it's been fine. It's probably actually a bit better because it's kind of set. Yeah, it sort of sets and gets a little bit crispy as well. Um, I realised how hot this Moroccan spiced um, breadcrumb was. It isn't hot, Mum's just a wimp. <laughs> okay, anyway, so you can cook these in two ways. You can either shallow fry them in a frying pan, but I'm um, going to bake them in the oven, oven bake them so a little bit healthier. So just a little bit of oil on a baking tray and then lift them up onto the baking tray. We've got the oven at 200 because they need a, a sort of a sharp, quick heat. Um, a little bit more oil over the top and then we're going to pop those into the oven. Oven gloves, or else I'll be told off one Yeah, she burnt herself yesterday using a tea towel, and I said that's just karma for not Ooh. using your oven gloves. Thankfully. So, into the oven. And I've been holding this pasta. Holding the pasta. So, we've got some um, hold on, oh. I haven't salted it. So, rolling boil, plenty of salt because pasta dough um, isn't salted when it's made. So you have to really salt it um, with the water. Oh, I didn't pass through yeah, sorry. So obviously that won't fit in there. It's a little trick. So you want to put a bit of pressure down and gradually bend the Don't spaghetti. You've just got to be really careful at the end to lift your fingers up and not dip your fingers in there. That would not feel very, very great. We don't want any reason to go to hospital at the moment. Absolutely not. So when you get to this point, literally just poke it in. You don't need oil in the water. And how long, so how long are we leaving the chicken so, in? So, um, chicken is going to be about, I reckon, sort of 10 to 12 minutes on a hot oven. Pasta will take 8 to 10 until it is al dente, to firm to the bite. Um, don't put the lid completely on because you'll have water everywhere. Now, Coming back to this pasta sauce, now it's quite chunky, you can mix it through the pasta just like that, but I've decided that I'm going to blend it to get a really smooth pasta sauce. And in fact, if you've got children who are a bit fussy with vegetables, um, if you've made this sauce, like we said, with lots of things like courgettes or aubergines and um, hidden peppers, vegetables, you can blend it and they will never know. It's called a hidden vegetable pasta sauce. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. Give that spaghetti a little bit of a stir, and then I'm just going to put this sauce into a jug carefully without trying to splash it everywhere. As I said, you can have as many veggies as you want packed into there and um, blend it so that any slightly vegetable fearing children were not or, or vegetable fearing grandfathers because my dad is like adverse to every vegetable <laughs> apart from an onion a carrot and a pea so he'd be all right with this one then well i'd hide things in it really because it's just ridiculous you've got to have at least your five a day should You're be very close to me though. because you came close to me not really <laughs> liking that sorry that was honest. quite close a little bit close no one needs to have that close to look at me. Right, so. Zhuzh. I'm going to give this a zhuzh. Oh, help if I turn it on. you wouldn't notice any difference with a load of extra veggies in there. Just warm that up. And um, 
<coughs> wait for it all to cook. I'm going to get some um, parmesan. Big shame of piles are washing. Oh, okay. <laughs> piles I just, are washing. I just did. Uh oh. Mum oh, um, has not hasn't shrunk Leo's clothes. They are her grandsons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not that. Not that bad a washer. In fact, I pride myself on my excellent washing. So what I'm going to do is just do some parmesan um, shavings to go on the top. Maybe a little salad. Not that exciting, but we get excited about very simple things at the moment, don't we, Libby? We do. Okay, so the pasta looks done. To be honest, the only way to properly test pasta, not to throw it for the wall. Yeah, no, that's a bad off. method because it sticks even if it's not done. Just try it. And it should be huh. from to the slight bite through, not slushy but not crunchy. So I'm gonna drain this. So that's 250 grams of pasta, which I think is about right for four people to be honest, but technically it should be 200. And then we're gonna go straight. into the pasta sauce. A little bit of oil. Obviously, a bit of salt. A bit of black pepper. And then we're just going to mix this. This is better. All around. Look at that. Mm -mm. Full of goodness. Okay. Now I have turned these once during cooking. Lost a little bit of crumb on that one, but no one's going to make too much. And I'm going to get everything ready to serve up. So. I should be able to twirl the pasta nicely, but I'm not very good at that. I might just slice all this chicken and put it on top of the pan, cheese on top, take it to the table, to be honest. But I was trying to serve it. This could go horribly wrong. Horribly wrong. Go on, Matt, you got it. I got this. Whoop, up. Wait. <laughs> oh, another bit. And then I'm just going to take a nice piece of chicken. You can pop the chicken straight on top, or nothing like a little jaunty, jaunty angle of a slice. Finished with a few parmesan parmesan shavings. There we go. So, chicken a la milanese. Fit to eat.